Business and Leisure, your weekly window to the world of business and guide to the good life. This is Ray Butch Gamboa for Business and Leisure, the weekly business and lifestyle TV and online magazine that centers on the latest significant business developments and lifestyle trends. Joining me again this week is our co-host. Please welcome our sunshine girl, Dame Monsonia, with the latest trends in leisure. Dame? Hi, Butch. I'm so happy to be back here on your longest running TV and online magazine show, Business and Leisure. And I'm more than excited to be your lifestyle host because I've got new and exciting features lined up for all of you. We start with Lifestyle Chronicles with the latest parties and events that we have covered. That is followed by our weekly featured leisure destinations on Lifestyle Boutique. Our Popular Places segment is next with a look back on a restaurant we visited that not only serves good food, but promotes history as well. And lastly is our weekly treat for all the firearm enthusiasts out there on Sports Shoot. Another edition of Business and Leisure for you to watch out for, so let's start right away with the hottest issues on business with our main man, Mr. Ray Butch Gamboa. Back to you, Butch. Thanks, Dave. We'll see you back in a short while. This is Business and Leisure, your window to the world of business and guide to the good life. And we shall start off with the week's significant business developments when we return right after this break. Introducing the all-new Mitsubishi Expander. See the horizon as a starting point. Use each obstacle to gain momentum. Make the unknown routine. Continue where all others stop. New Peugeot SUV range. Never have SUVs gone so far. You. I'll miss you too. So, why are you back? I didn't want to miss you. Welcome back to Business and Leisure. We now have some of the latest significant business developments on BizWatch our business section. For our lead issue this week, Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez has a constructive suggestion to the country's mining firms. This suggestion is meant to rehabilitate lands affected by mining in the area. Our business reporter Heidi Santos has the story. Trade Secretary Mon Lopez pitched the idea of developing bamboo plantations in areas affected by mining to stakeholders of the mining industry. This will not only rejuvenate the affected lands, but will also provide local communities with a source of livelihood. According to Trade Secretary Mon Lopez, mining companies have cast tracts of land that need rehabilitation and they have the funds, mandated allocation from their operating expenses for rehabilitation use. Bamboo grows fast, has strong carbon absorption, is effective for anti-soil erosion, and more importantly, has the ability to make the mined areas restore its condition for agricultural purposes. It so happens that the country is also in dire need of bamboo. The rehabilitation program will not only benefit the communities affected, it will also solve the bamboo supply problem. 
Bamboo is used to make panels, fiberboards, furniture, clothing, fabric, and flooring, among others. Bamboo can also be used to build desks and chairs for classrooms for use by the Department of Education, which badly needs the classroom furniture. At the moment, the Philippines produces 5 million bamboo combs, but the demand reaches 20 million. According to Secretary Lopez, the country only has 10,000 hectares planted to bamboo, but there are 300,000 hectares of mined areas that can be rehabilitated with bamboo. Secretary Lopez wants to heed President Duterte's call for responsible mining, and the Secretary believes that bamboo farming is the way to move forward to serve the interests of the local communities, the environment, and the miners. Both Secretary Lopez and Environment Secretary Roy Simatu believe that the rehabilitation plan of planting bamboo can meet the requirements of President Duterte to have a sustainable mining development plan, especially for open pit mining. Meanwhile, as strain gets moving on a faster pace, the Filipinos will see at least five infrastructure projects in 2019, funded by revenues from the program. Here's our BizWatch correspondent Mikey Atendido with the details. Budget Secretary Ben Jokno told the Committee on Finance in a recent hearing that proceeds from train will be allocated for the implementation of our flagship infrastructure projects in 2019. Among the projects to be funded by train next year is the construction of sports facilities of the National Government Administrative Center, which is part of the new Clark City. This project will be implemented by the Basis Conversion and Development Authority with a cost of 9.5 billion pesos. Other projects include the Subic Clark Railway project, which will cost 2.9 billion pesos, and the Ambalsimway River and the Rio Grande de Mindanao River flood control projects of the DPWH with a combined funding of 2.6 billion pesos. Among the infrastructure projects are the new Cebu International Container Port with a cost of 200 million pesos and the priority bridges crossing Pasig River and Bangahan floodway bridges costing 600 million pesos. According to estimates from the Department of Finance, train is expected to generate an additional 89.9 billion pesos in revenue for 2018 alone. By next year, the DOF expects to generate 181.4 billion pesos when combined with other tax revenue sources. By 2019, TRAIN will also help mitigate the effects of inflation through the Unconditional Cash Transfer Program, which has an allocation of 37.6 billion pesos for 2019, as compared to 25.7 billion pesos allocation for 2018. Through this program, cash subsidies will increase to 3,600 pesos annually from only 2,400 pesos. Also included is the Pantawid Pasada program with a funding of 3.9 billion pesos for 2019 and the rollout of the PUV modernization program with a budget of 2.7 billion pesos. There is much to look forward to in 2019 and this can only look good for the Filipino people. At this juncture, we will have to take a short break. Stay with us because we will be back shortly with more interesting and relevant business issues. It's back! Participate in the only public poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Vote for your favorite car makes and models in the 2018-2019 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph to vote every day until September 30, 2018 and get a chance to win prizes in the daily raffle. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Which models do you think will become this year's Automobile of the Year in the Standard and Premium Luxury Class? You choose. You decide. See the horizon as a starting point.
use each obstacle to gain momentum. Make the unknown routine. Continue where all others stop. New Peugeot SUV range. Never have SUVs gone so far. Introducing the all-new Mitsubishi Expander. Be comfortable when you're out of your comfort zone and embrace a wider world of adventure. BRV, rise above your limits. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed, a casual meal, or an important business event, Ilustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Ilustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Ilustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Part of the 2018 to 2019 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. The only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA 2018. Then, vote for as many as five different car models that you believe should become the 2018 to 2019 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2018. And get a chance to win prizes in the daily raffle. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who win? You choose. You decide. Vote now. Welcome back to Business and Leisure's Best Watch as we continue with more interesting business issues for you. On the agricultural front, the Department of Agriculture is pressing Congress to pass 17 measures which promise to improve the productivity of our farm sector. In the process, these measures will likely increase our farmers' income. Heidi Santos has the story. Agriculture Secretary Emmanuel Pignol has an ally in President Duterte who endorsed one of the measures he is pitching for. This is the proposed National Land Use Act or NLUA, which the President endorsed to the Senate. This act will put in place a national land use policy that will address the Philippines' competing land requirements for food, housing, and environmental conservation. Another measure that Secretary Pignol is urging Congress and Senate to pass are the bill that aims to promote scientific propagation, processing, utilization, and development of Philippine native animals. There is also House Bill 434, which will institutionalize the National Veterinary Quarantine Services, House Bill 3356 for the conversion of the Bureau of Animal Industry into the National Livestock and Veterinary Services Authority, the Act providing a framework for the right to adequate food, the proposed Dairy Development Act that will restructure and realign agencies in charge of ruminants, and the measure that will establish the Philippine Banana Research and Development Center in Panabo, Davao del Norte. There are many other measures that the Department of Agriculture is urging Congress and Senate to pass. Also included here are House Bill 2912, that calls for the establishment of the Philippine Rubber Industry Development Board, the Abaca Development Act, and the Sagis Saka Act, which will mandate national and local government agencies to directly purchase agricultural and fishery products from accredited farmers and fishermen's cooperatives, and a bill that will institutionalize integrated urban farming. The Agriculture Secretary is also seeking to strengthen the Philippine crop insurance and amend the bill that would establish a Carabao Center in the Bicol region. 
And now for our fourth and final business issue for this week, we are still on the agricultural front as the Philippine Statistics Authority reported that our agricultural sector slowed down again in the second quarter of the year. Mikey Atentido has the details. The local farm sector grew by only 0.07% from April to June this year, slower than 6.22% growth in the same period in 2017. In the first quarter, this growth was registered at 0.58% and the Department of Agriculture expects even slower growth because of the season and high base reference after the El Niño phenomenon two years ago. Agriculture Secretary, noting that any growth is positive news for the agency, said that the sector is highly vulnerable to climate change. The agriculture sector grossed 447 billion pesos. In terms of prices, this is higher than last year's figure by 6%. Palay decreased 1% and corn decreased by 3%. Crops which account for the bulk of the total agricultural production decreased by 2%. Palay production decreased by 4.09 million metric tons and corn production decreased to 1.28 million metric tons. The decline may be attributed to the shift to cassava and sugarcane and the closure or rehabilitation of some irrigation facilities. However, major crops like coconut, banana, mango, tomato, garlic, pineapple, mongo, eggplant, and rubber posted production gains, grossing 241.9 billion pesos. Livestock improved by 1.9% with gross earnings rising 10% due to higher farm gate prices, higher live births, and sustained demand from customers. Improvement of facilities and the opening of new broiler farms also contributed to the improvement. Fisheries though, which make up 17% of the total farm output, went down by 0.05% in volume, though the value increased by 7% to 68 billion pesos. This is because of the fish kill brought about the sudden change of weather conditions, high cost of feeding materials, and higher mortality rate due to polluted water. It's not really bad news for the agricultural sector as farm gate prices rose 5% in the second quarter. Price gains were recorded for all subsectors except for poultry. And on that note, we end this week's Best Watch. We hope you will join us again next week for more relevant and informative business issues. <music> business and Leisure continues after a short break with an interesting feature on Proud Pinoy Entrepreneur. Stay with us. It's back. Participate in the only public poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. Vote for your favorite car makes and models in the 2018 to 2019 Auto Focus People's Choice Awards. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph to vote every day until September 30, 2018, and get a chance to win prizes in the daily raffle. The Auto Focus People's Choice Awards. Which models do you think will become this year's Automobile of the Year in the Standard and Premium Luxury Class? You choose. You decide. I'm going to miss you. I'll miss you too. So, why are you back? I didn't want to miss you. These are the Fuel Masters. Every time they're on the court, it's high performance. Every time I'm on the road, I can also expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. We made it! The next generation Phoenix Fuels, now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. I'm gonna miss you. I'll miss you too. So, why are you back? I didn't want to miss you.
Bouldering Today is now on the web. Watch this episode or other past episodes of the country's longest running motoring program any time of the day by logging on to our website, motoringtoday.ph. Motoring Today is now online. Just the click away. Be comfortable when you're out of your comfort zone and embrace a wider world of adventure. BRV, rise above your limits. Be part of the 2018-2019 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. The only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA 2018. Then, vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2018-2019 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2018 and get a chance to win prizes in the daily raffle. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose. You decide. Vote now. Welcome back to Business and Leisure and you're still on our business section and what we have next is our feature on our Proud Pinoy Entrepreneur segment. Coming up is a second look of a very inspiring story of one of the most successful entrepreneurs we have in our midst today. He owns the biggest local coffee brand in the country but more than that his social responsibility is what inspires many across several industries in the Philippines. Steve Benitez is an icon among Filipino entrepreneurs. He who has put the spotlight on Philippine coffee these past several years. He is known more widely as the father of Bose Coffee, a homegrown brew that is loved and patronized by the Filipino coffee community. Steve has always been an entrepreneur, having started other businesses before he started Bose Coffee in 1996. Well, right before I opened it, I studied the business for two years. I, I attended a lot of conferences and expos and, and uh, I traveled a lot to immerse myself in the coffee culture outside of the Philippines. And one day, um, uh, I felt that I was ready to open, so that was in 1996. And when I opened, right before I opened that store, um, nobody believed in my concept. And so I really relied on my guts. To, to take on the project. And two months before I was about to open, even my partners, my two other partners, backed out of the project. And so what I had was my belief in the project, in, 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 um, in belief in the con my belief in the concept that really pushed me to do it. And uh, that, that's basically how it all started, right? Steve now shares that before he started it, all the studies he made indicated that he shouldn't even open the business because it didn't look like a feasible one. So you have to remember in 1996, the concept of what we know of coffee shops right now was totally alien to the market. It's, no one was doing it, it was totally new, and so they all felt that it wouldn't work. Uh, at that time, coffee was something that was purely a, a commodity and a beverage and there was no experience attached to it. And when I did the study, people said that they will not pay 15 pesos for a cup of coffee. Back in 1996, the coffee was just given away after meals in the restaurant and more people were familiar with instant coffee. Steve's concept was unheard of, but the young entrepreneur went on with his concept anyway. In the first three months of operation, he had sales of 300 pesos to less than 1,000 a day, which wasn't even enough to cover his rent of 10,000 pesos per month, but he plotted on. For me, it wasn't just a business. It was something that it was kind of a, my way or my form of a showing and executing the passion that I had for coffee. 
His concept involved elevating the coffee experience by introducing coffee that uses espresso as a base. Definitely a first here. It was a purely coffee business with a very limited beverage and food lineup. People were intimidated by the special coffee choices and would not order the cappuccinos and lattes. I remember an instance where there was a girl who came to my, a lady who came to my store and asked for a drink and asked what drinks we were serving. And so I said we were serving freshly brewed coffee or espresso based coffee. And she mentioned how much, uh, she asked how much and I said 15 pesos for drip and 25 for espresso or cappuccino. And first reaction, that's really expensive. No? Ang mahal naman yan. So he, she was saying, do you have anything that was cheaper? Like 5 pesos or 10 pesos? Because she was used to instant coffee. And I said, no we don't. I explained to her what our coffee was. I explained to her the process that the beverage goes through. And she just said, no, I don't want it. She was going to turn around. But I think that was my turning point. I said, I can't let this girl turn around and, and walk away from me. And so I said, ma'am, why don't you just sit down and I'll give you coffee for free. Try it until, uh, and give me your judgment at the end of, the, at the end of your drink. In the first three to six months, he was giving away coffee for free just to educate the market and he was ecstatic when he got a lot of conversations after that. The biggest thing that makes us different is that number one, we're a homegrown company. Uh, if you look around the industry, this is dominated by foreign franchises. So we're the biggest homegrown coffee chain that makes us different. The second one is Bose Coffee only serves Philippine coffee and is so proud of it. They highlight and showcase Philippine coffee and Steve's dream is to bring back our homegrown brew to the global stage. He shared that in the late 1800s, the Philippines was one of the biggest coffee growers in the world. Sadly, we lost that position over time due to lack of investments and government support which led many farmers to shift to other crops. Now, Bose Coffee wants to bring back our lost glory, but in the process, Steve Benitez needs to make Philippine coffee popular here at home first and ensure that we have enough supply. Right now, we grow only 30% of the local demand and the 70% is imported. Steve's advocacy now is to support the coffee industry by procuring Philippine coffee directly from the coffee farmers themselves. Uh, so we have an industry-wide uh, campaign um, composed of all of these coffee stakeholders and we form uh, with the partnership of government Philippine Coffee Council and so I'm very active in that and our objective is to increase um, yield um, for the coffee farmers and in effect increase income for them. The Philippine coffee that we source uh, would range from different parts of the country depending on what variety. So if you're talking about Robusta they come from the lowlands of Cavite, Batangas, uh, some of them from Mindanao. But if you're talking about the higher quality Arabica beans, which we use, our, our Arabica beans are uh, sourced from the highlands of from the highlands of the Philippines. So such as Benguet, Mountain Province, Sagada, very popular one. We have it in Bukidnon. Uh, we have in Mount Apo in Davao, um, Mount Matutung and in Cotabato and Mount Ketenglad in Bukidnon. So basically, the highlands of Mindanao and the highlands of Luzon. Steve Benitez, the entrepreneur, is also acutely conscious of the social enterprises around him and tries at every turn to engage with these social entrepreneurs. In 2011, when he was trying to reinvent the coffee experience in Bose Coffee and trying hard to source out something unique to the Philippines, he met such a person named Anya. And she was, her, she was so passionate about the Philippine fabric or the weaves that come from different parts of the Philippines. So she would bring all of these uh, fabrics to her shop in Cebu. And when I, when I met her and I saw what she was doing, I felt that the fabric could actually be integrated into our shops through, through the upholstery, through our uniforms, and through our merchandise. 
Anya went on to become a supplier of Bose Coffee and was very grateful that Bose became her biggest client that helped make her social enterprise sustainable. I think that was a eureka uh, moment for me because then I realized that what I had um, as a business was a very powerful platform to change lives. For Steve, the engagement with social entrepreneurs was a concrete manifestation that business can be a very powerful platform to affect change in the industry where you belong. In the coffee industry, change must first come to the coffee farmers. He also had to seek out more social entrepreneurs whose products are related to the coffee lifestyle and integrate them into their system. He created a platform for them just to plug in and Steve gives them market access. Examples are Bayani Brew, an iced tea company, Cha Laya, a local herbal tea producer, Rags to Riches, Theo and Philo that source their cacao from Davao. Uh, I, I would call this a social procurement platform where we procure from social enterprise partners and we monitor the, the progress of their communities to make sure that our impact in them is felt by by the low, the way the by the community itself. So we support them by giving them um, equipment. Uh, we support them by giving them some kind of a uh, community education. So, in a small way, I would still call it small because I I, I believe that we can really make a bigger impact um, as we move forward. So that that's how that that that's how that engagement started. That's how that uh, model started. In the process, the father of Bose Coffee has gotten himself involved in several organizations like Endeavor. Endeavor is an organization that um, helps these entrepreneurs who make it as part of Endeavor to help them scale up quickly and faster. And, and, and that has been a very big, a big impact to me. And the other organization that has the biggest impact in, in my entrepreneurial journey is an entrepreneur's organization. So Entrepreneurs, or EO for short, it's an uh, organization which has a chapter in the Philippines, but it is a global organization of entrepreneurs. Because of his engagement with entrepreneurial organization, he grew his business from 10 stores to over 100 stores in 13 to 14 years, and he is set to open 20 more this year. Another milestone in Bose Coffee history is their Qatar store, which was two or three years in the making. And so we opened and uh, we soft opened a week ago in Qatar. So we signed up a exclusive country franchise uh, with a group there who's in retail for them to open five stores in five years or three stores in the first two years. So they're already going to be opening two uh, by next month. In Bose Coffee's five-year plan, the company was supposed to expand globally in five years. But Qatar happened earlier than that. The company will continue to expand in areas where there is a big concentration of Filipino communities starting 2020 or even in late 2019. Because of our continued economic growth in the country, it is inevitable that more players want to come into the country. Steve finds this most challenging. So the number one challenge for us is to be able to always update ourselves to the level where competition, or even higher than competition. So there's this pressure to always reinvent yourselves, to make yourself relevant, and to make yourself more efficient. Number two, I would say location. Um, having, finding the right location has become also a challenge for us. As I mentioned a while ago, uh, this industry of ours is dominated by foreign franchises and most of the malls would actually put Filipino uh, brands uh, second in line. Steve is happy to note that there is a growing sentiment here at home to support Filipino brands. Simply surrendering to the easiest route of just getting a foreign franchise stifles Filipino creativity, Steve says, because then there was no need to create something unique to us. So I encourage a lot of entrepreneurs to, one, come up with something original that is from, that is, that uses um, Filipino, how would I call that? that uses the unique resources from the Philippines because then you can make yourself different from the others. Now, even abroad, the Filipino 
uh, ingenuity and products are being recognized. So that's really opportunity for Filipino entrepreneurs. You have first dib. You are from here, so you have that first dib. So take advantage of that. Our young entrepreneurs can definitely learn from the father of Bose Coffee. He puts a lot of emphasis on focus and discipline, and he is very bullish about Bose Coffee being here for the very long haul. He is now working on having 200 stores and by 2021 to expand globally. Hopefully, we will be in more than five countries by 2020, and we will have over 200 stores in the Philippines. And to the young entrepreneurs who are impatient and to those who go into a business blindly, this is his advice. Number one advice is for entrepreneurs is before you dive into it, make sure you have enough information so you can make a wise decision. Your decision should be based on data. Your decision should be based on good information. So that's number one. And number two is to have the discipline to follow through. I mean, some of the entrepreneurs I've met, startups, because I also mentor startups, uh, they are very impatient in scaling up. I mean, you see a lot of stories wherein there are instant millionaires and people want to be one right away. That doesn't happen. In real life, that does, maybe one out of a million, but reality is it doesn't happen all the time. So I'd, one of the, what, the other advice I'd like to tell entrepreneurs is to number one be uh, disciplined I mean you have to have the discipline to stay on course and not get swayed by by what's just happening outside so information and I always say discipline discipline is something it's always a big word for me We have just met Mr. Steve Benitez, father of Bose Coffee, our proud Pinoy entrepreneur this week. The leisure portion of Business Leisure is coming up next with our co-host Sunshine Girl Damon Sayak, dishing out the latest lifestyle trends. Please stay with us. When thinking of your favorite car brands and models, which brands and models immediately come to mind? Could it be a fuel-efficient sedan for that everyday drive? A sleek and agile sports car? A rugged and versatile SUV? That roomy and comfortable MPV or van? Or that versatile go-anywhere pickup? Be a part of the 2018-2019 Autofocus People's Choice Awards! Vote for the brands and models that will become the 2018-2019 Autofocus Automobiles of the Year in the standard and premium luxury classes. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph to vote every day until September 30, 2018 and get a chance to win prizes in the daily raffle. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose. You decide. From the everyday, the new Toyota Rush. Calling all automobile enthusiasts. Autofocus.com.ph is exclusive to the automobile where you'll find reviews on the latest brand new car models, together with their head-to-head -head comparisons. It has the detailed specs of car models available in the country and their latest SRPs and special promos, together with the latest auto industry news and developments like car launches and test drives. Autofocus.com.ph is all about automobiles. Click on! Be comfortable when you're out of your comfort zone and embrace a wider world of adventure. BRV, rise above your limits.
be part of the 2018 to 2019 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. The only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA 2018. Then, vote for as many as five different car models that you believe should become the 2018 to 2019 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2018 and get a chance to win prizes in the daily raffle. The Auto Focus People's Choice Awards. Who win? You choose. You decide. Vote now. Welcome back to BNL, and it's now time for our lifestyle section. As we call on our co-host this week, Dave Monsaya. Dave, it's all yours. Thanks again, Butch, for turning them over to me. And hi there, are you still with me? Hope so, because it's now my turn to take the spotlight as I give you the best in lifestyle. Well, let's get this show going with the latest and trendiest events that happened in and even out of the Metro. Here now is Lifestyle Chronicles. Lexus Manila Incorporated recently unveiled the all-new ES350 in an event held Tuesday, August 14 at their showroom in BGC Taguig. The model boasts of a new sleeker design with a redesigned spindle grille with triple LED headlamps. Lexus also gives the all-new ES a wider and lower appearance with new chassis and suspension with Lexus claims for the customers to have a more responsive drive as well as superior ride comfort. It now comes with a 3.5-liter V6 engine with a new 8-speed direct shift automatic transmission. On the inside, the model now carries a 17-speaker Mark Levinson premium surround sound system. It also has a remote touch interface that features a 12.3-inch Lexus premium navigation screen. The model is available in 8 different colors. The all-new Lexus ES350 is now available for test drive at the Lexus Manila showroom in BGC. Our price is 4,308,000 and this comes into around 8 different colors exterior and the combination of 4 different interior colors so you can choose. We have the newest one which is the Ice Ecru. This is like beige color. And for the first time for the ES, we have the sunlight green mica metallic. So these are the two new colors. So please come over here in uh, Global City. We're right here at the back of uh, Home Depot, just beside at the back also of St. Luke's Hospital. Witness the latest offering from Lexus. We have a test drive unit, so please feel free to come anytime. More and more events exclusively coming your way, only here on Lifestyle Chronicles. Continuing with our leisure report this week, here's our what and where to go leisure destinations for you. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed, a casual meal, or an important business event, Ilustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Ilustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Ilustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. A special oven with specially sourced charcoal distinguishes the mouth-watering grilled specialties of Chef Jesse's Grill. Spare ribs with special one-of-a-kind barbecue sauce, clams with delicious special butter concoction. Garden fresh organic salads are just a few of the best-selling offerings from renowned Filipino chef Jesse Sinshaka's place run in tandem with brother Chef Rio. Chef Jesse's Grill is located in the Grove by Rockwall in Pasig City, a food lover's destination indeed. And that's a regular what to enjoy and where to go list. This is Alicia's weekly guide to destinations and places to go to enjoy the good life. Places 
Texas featuring Romulo Cafe in Makati is coming right up after this short break. Don't go anywhere. When thinking of your favorite car brands and models, which brands and models immediately come to mind? Could it be a fuel-efficient sedan for that everyday drive? A sleek and agile sports car? A rugged and versatile SUV? That roomy and comfortable MPV or van? Or that versatile go-anywhere pickup? Be a part of the 2018 to 2019 Auto Focus People's Choice Awards. Vote for the brands and models that will become the 2018 to 2019 Auto Focus Automobiles of the Year in the Standard and Premium Luxury Class. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph to vote every day until September 30, 2018 and get a chance to win prizes in the daily raffle. The Auto Focus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose. You decide. Be comfortable when you're out of your comfort zone and embrace a wider world of adventure. BRV, rise above your limits. From the everyday, the new Toyota Rush. These are the Fuel Masters. Every time they're on the court, it's high performance. Every time I'm on the road, I can also expect high performance from Phoenix Fuels. We made it! The next generation Phoenix Fuels, now with Pulse Technology, delivers enhanced power and acceleration to make every trip come alive. Part of the 2018-2019 Autofocus People's Choice Awards. The only nationwide poll to determine the country's most popular car brands and models. It's easy. Log on to www.autofocus.com.ph slash AFPCA 2018. Then, vote for as many as five different models that you believe should become the 2018-2019 Autofocus Automobile of the Year in separate standard and premium luxury categories. Vote every day until September 30, 2018 and get a chance to win prizes in the daily raffle. The Autofocus People's Choice Awards. Who will win? You choose. You decide. Vote now. Our feature on Places this week is every Filipino's pride, not only for the great local cuisine that it offers, but also for the great statesman that it pays tribute to. This is Romulo Cafe. Romulo Cafe is by now a byword in the local culinary world, having opened its first branch nine years ago. BNL paid a visit to this latest branch that they opened in Alabang at the Azumi Boutique Hotel and was greeted warmly by the owners Sandy and Enzo Squilantini. Sandy is a granddaughter of the great Filipino statesman General Carlos P. Romulo. Well, I'm the granddaughter of Carlos Romulo and this restaurant is in honor of him. Um, we've been at it for the last nine years, am I right? Nine years. It was really the brainchild of my husband, so maybe he should be the one to explain what his thoughts were about it. thought that it would be a nice uh, thing to, to honor a great man, Carlos B. Romulo. 
uh, who loved uh, Filipino food, he loved to travel, he loved to entertain, he loved to see people. So what better venue than a restaurant where people can socialize, have a good meal. Um, so that's what uh, I thought of in 2009. We opened our first uh, Romulo Cafe in Quezon City. The Romulo Cafe in Quezon City was actually their very first branch, a partnership with famous designer Ivy Almario. Our first instinct actually was to open in Makati. But then for some reason, a friend said, why don't you look at Quezon City? You know, there's the rent is very reasonable. There's a lot of people there. Why don't you try? So we went to the first our first branch, we saw the place, and we invited our um, partner, Ivy Almario, the designer, to come with us. And when she saw the place, she immediately fell in love with it and said, I think we can do something nice with this place. So that's how it started, how it became like a house. Um, she designed it like how it looked, how our house looked before. I showed her pictures. Of, of our childhood house. Uh, it was called Kasiyahan. And we um, did the black and white floors because that's how our dining room area was in the old house. So things, little touches like that that we put in made it like a really homey restaurant. So really, Lutong Bahay, you know, welcoming you to our house. That was really the idea behind Roman Cafe. Their first branch was an instant success and it didn't take the couple and their business partner to plan their second and ultimately their third branch. After Quezon City, we opened in Makati in 2011. And in tw after 2011, uh, friends of ours, the owners of the, of the hotel, said, you know, when they were still building it, they said, would you like to to run the F&B of the hotel, and this was 2014, 2014. Well, we were talking 2012, 2013, and we said, yeah, sure, we'd, we'd like to open in Alabang. So that was, the opportunity was presented to us, and we, we took it. And this is their latest baby, Romulo Cafe in Alabang, located at the Azumi Boutique Hotel. It distinguishes itself from the two previous ones, but all three share the same historic and nostalgic touches that make Romulo Cafe stand out. Unlike the other Romulo Cafes, because it's really about my grandfather's life, and if you look at the other branches, it's really about the people he knew, like um, we have the historic late the landing or when he was president of United Nations, things like that. In this branch, it's letters that, you know, all these dignitaries wrote him. So they're here letters um, from General MacArthur, letters from the Kennedys, things like that, that we wanted to show in this branch, something different. When your forefather is a historical figure who figures in history books like Carlos P. Romulo, there will be invariably be loads of important memorabilia collected from this colorful and eventful past. And the family has collected them all and kept them in mint condition. There are well-kept letters identified with accompanying pictures of foreign presidents and dignitaries, as well as their own historical luminaries as well. When they first opened, their target market was, of course, the hotel guests and the Alabang residents. But because of word of mouth, people from as far as Cavite and neighboring cities venture into their cafe with high expectations. Well, a lot of people said, finally, because it's kind of far to go all the way to Makati and Quezon City. Though we had people who actually would come from Cavite, Alabang, and go all the way to Quezon City when we first opened. I think what makes us unique is the historical value we have in the restaurant. So aside from the good food, which is really my grandmother's recipes, um, you can walk around and read all the historical facts on the walls and see, you know, 
what my grandfather was all about. And we were hoping that this would inspire the youth to strive to be world class also like him. Indeed, the letters on the walls proudly framed by his family tells much of how the world thought of the little man who stood proud among the presidents and dignitaries of the world. Sandy and Enzo Schillantini have done well to preserve and honor his memory when they opened Romolo Cafe. Inside the cafe's interiors are more contemporary but still decidedly Filipino. The walls evoke a nostalgic touch. We're happy. It's doing quite well. Doing quite well. This this particular one, yeah, it, it's doing okay. Uh, number one is still Quezon City. Well, maybe in time it will be a good fight among the three branches as to which one leads. But for now, let's check out their personal favorites among their offerings. Well, our number one seller is Lola Virginia's relleno. Um, it's her original recipe and actually is still made in our house. So nobody, not our cooks or anybody, know how to make that. It's really from our house. My favorite dish here, well, one of them is the chicken relleno, and then maybe the, the next one would be the, the crispy pata. Romulo Cafe in Alabang seats about 70 to 80 guests, and because it is located inside a hotel, they serve breakfast really early. This, this particular one in Alabang, since this is in a, in a hotel, uh, we serve breakfast and I think that starts at 6, 6 a.m. Uh, it's the only one. Quezon City and Makati don't start at 6. So this starts from 6 until 10 in the evening, while uh, Quezon City and Makati are, uh, I believe it starts 10, 30 or 11 in the morning and then uh, until 3 in the afternoon, uh, it's a break. For lunch and then we open again for dinner at 6 o'clock and then close at about 10. They have their ample share of big events like weddings, baptismals and birthday parties. But every day is a busy day for them because they offer value for money. The average check is about, uh, we're going about 590 per person, between 550 and 590. That's the average check. We asked the couple if there is another branch in the drawing board for Romulo Cafe. Actually, two years ago we opened in London. And so we've been getting our offers to, to open in other countries. But I don't know, that still remains to be seen. And now it's time to check out the feast that Sandy Schilantini has laid out for viewers. These are our best sellers in Romulo Cafe. Um, these are our signature dishes. Um, this is our chicken relleno, Lola Virginia's chicken relleno. This is Tito Greg's kare kare. This one is called uh, boneless crispy patang binagoongan. And this is the um, flying tilapia with three different sauces. Uh, bagoong, honey bagoong, uh, chili garlic, and a soy sauce. Let's have a second and third look at these fascinating dishes, all Filipino favorites. The chicken relleno, of course, as Sandy Romulus Quilantini earlier said, is prepared from their kitchen at home. It remains a family heirloom recipe that she is sharing with the public at their restaurant. And here's the perennial favorite of all Pinoy's here and abroad, the kare kare, the peanut-based dish that features luscious beef pata and tripes, a serving of vegetable and of course of this deliciously oily bago. The cafe has taken the crispy pata another notch higher, serving it boneless but still crisp and with a bagoong dipping sauce. And finally, the flying tilapia, which is all crisp from all sides, served with three different dipping sauces. These are our two best-selling desserts. This is called suman salatik, and this is my grandfather's favorite halo-halo. The suman salatik is uniquely served in small glasses. And the Halo Halo features generous servings of leche flan and ube ice cream on top of creamy fine ice.
Well, if those dishes make your mouth water and those historical touches on the walls make you proud to be a Filipino, heed Sandy's and Enzo's personal invite. We'd like to invite everybody to visit um, Romulo Cafe in Alabang, Makati, and Quezon City, and London if you're ever there. It's not only a feast for the tummy and the eyes, but for a sense of history and pride and our national identity as well. That is Romulo Cafe, our feature this week on Places. We continue on with our show with Sports Shoot. Let's all find out what firearm we have on Spotlight today. Watch this. Sports Shoot is brought to you by Rock Island Armory, manufactured by Arms Corps Global Defense Incorporated. Welcome to Sports Shoot. This is a leisure segment for the gun enthusiast. This week, our featured handgun is this Remington RP9, and the manufacturers say that there are three important features that differentiate it from other handguns in the market. These three differences are capacity, grip circumference, and trigger. The Remington RP9 is a striker-fired and recoil-operated semi-automatic 9mm. It has a capacity of 18 plus 1 rounds. Its barrel is 4.5 inches and made of stainless steel. The RP9's overall length is 7.91 inches and its width is 1.27 inches. It has a height of 5.56 inches and weighs 1 pound 10.4 ounces. It is finished in PVD stainless steel or black oxide. For sights, it is dovetail, three dot, white ledge for rear and wind gauge adjacent. The trigger has been tested at six pounds and it retails in the US for $550. On the range, experts found dissertations on the grip perfect for shooting. Recoil is extremely mild, probably due in part to the excellent grip, and this was true even with rapid fire shooting. At 25 yards, groups were impressive with several 1.5 inches five shot clusters. Overall, the Remington RP9 averaged around 2 inches with every load. Although each of us has his own personal preferences, this striker-fired handgun remains one of the more impressive ones in the market. That was the Remington RP9, our featured handgun for this week's sports shoot. And that sports shoot, this is a leisure segment for the gun enthusiasts. Sports Shoot is brought to you by Rock Island Armory, manufactured by Arms Corps Global Defense Incorporated. That's another firearm for you to check out. And well, that's all I got for you today here on the Lifestyle section of Business and Leisure. Come back again next time with more exciting and informative features. I'm Damon Sayak, and we'll turn you over now to our main man, Mr. Ray Butch Gamboa. See you again, Butch. Thanks, Dave, for this week's Leisure Report. And with that, we end another episode of Business and Leisure. Thank you for staying with us. Also, don't forget to follow us in our social media accounts. Till the next time, this has been your host, Ray Butch Gamboa. Good business to all and enjoy the good life.